Brian Cage invokes option C. Welcome back to the ACV Wrestling Talk channel, your main source for wrestling news, topics, discussions, previews, all that kind of good stuff. I'm your host, Alexis Carrillo, and quite an interesting episode of Impact we have for tonight, because it's Thanksgiving. By the way, happy Thanksgiving to all of you. Make sure you spend it with your family and have a damn good time, and take it a little bit easy on a turkey. But back to Impact Wrestling. With it being a special themed episode, with it being a special Thanksgiving episode of Impact Wrestling, these holiday editions of Impact, or of any show really, really, don't really offer much of character or story progression. They're more uh, just a quota of a show. At least that's what I've noticed in the past. They are, they are there, they air for those who want to watch it during a special holiday, but they're not, can't miss or not must see if you want to continue with the storylines and if a lot of families don't want to actually sit down and watch wrestling on this day. So with that said, last week we had a certain Weapon X the Swolverine, they call him, Brian Cage, he successfully defended his X Division Championship against Sammy Callahan in a fairly good match. It wasn't out of this world, it wasn't really amazing, but it was a good match, it was a good main event. But one thing that caught everyone off guard, one thing that caught me by surprise was the fact that right after, just 30 seconds after he retained his title, he talked about how he was cashing it in, how he was invoking option C, and then left. He was invoking option C to challenge Johnny Impact for the World Heavyweight Championship at homecoming on January 6th in Nashville, Tennessee, and then he just left the title in the middle of that ring. Now, you already know how I feel about option C, about how they are treating the X Division Championship, if you've uh, watched my previous video of Option C, why it worked then, but wouldn't now, it's right uh, on the YouTube channel, you can make sure uh, to look it up after you watch this video, but last week it was a little more cringeworthy, it was a little bit more annoying to me than it should have been. Because, yes, Brian Cage is a credible challenger to Johnny Impact's World Championship reign. And I did believe that they were building him up to, become, to be a challenger and possibly cash in, for lack of a better word, cash in said title for a world title shot. I just did not like the way they did that. I think if they were planning on doing that, they should have at least waited a week. You know, don't cash it in, don't abandon the title, you just successfully defended it, defend it on the same night so you could get a world title shot. It makes it seem like you were only carrying the title along as, as a burden for the past month because you were probably you probably had the world title in your mind and now you had to defend your possibility of option C against Sammy Callahan because if you didn't you would lose the option of option C and the world and a future world title shot. I just don't like how they're treating the X Division Championship with this entire option C situation. Back in 2012 it was new, it was something never before seen, it was interesting, it was entertaining and it worked. But in the long run, now without Destination X, it just seems that whoever becomes X Division Champion can cash it in whenever the hell they want. I mean, we're going to have the fate of the X Division title revealed on tonight's episode of Impact Wrestling. But the fact is, what stops whoever wins this 16-man, 8-man, 4-way, whatever, or how many men are going to be a part of this tournament, what stops whoever wins this tournament from obtaining the championship, from gaining one of the most prestigious titles in Impact Wrestling history, and then immediately cashing it in? You're basically turning it into a token. You're turning it into a ticket. You ha hell, it's a coupon. It's in your wallet. You're carrying in your wallet 
a damn coupon you don't want to use right now, but you will eventually use for something better, for a dinner. In this case, the world title. That's what bothers me about option C and how they are treating the X Division Championship. But again, what do I always say? I should, you know, I shouldn't worry about it. You shouldn't worry about it. You know, it's entertainment. They're gonna do what they want, what they're gonna do. It's Impact Wrestling's world, their rules, their regulations. That's fine. We have no control over that. So let's just take it as it is: entertainment. And the fact of the matter is, Brian Cage is a formidable challenger for Johnny Impact at Homecoming. That's a match I'm looking forward to. And gotta say, you know, Homecoming is lining up to be a hell of a pay-per-view. Because we've already got Brian Cage versus Johnny Impact for the World Heavyweight Championship. That'll be a damn good main event, if given enough time. We've got the confirmation of Taya Valkyrie challenge, once again challenging Tessa Blanchard for the Knockouts Championship in Nashville. And the only thing missing from that match, in my opinion, is a stipulation. Because Tessa Blanchard has cheated her way to retaining her title against Taya Valkyrie a couple of times in the past. They need to assure that does not happen at homecoming. And... It seems that they're also building up towards a Lucha Brothers versus LAX for the World Tag Team titles at that pay-per-view, which, like I say, that's that could be the one that seals the show, even more than the main event, even more than the Knockouts title match. If that match is confirmed, LAX, Lucha Brothers, Tag Team titles, if that match is confirmed, that match will steal the show at home coming. One interesting thing to note about the Lucha Brothers versus LAX possible feud happening is the segment from last week where it was clear that Santana and Ortiz wanted to hand the Lucha Brothers a title shot. They thought the Lucha Brothers were deserving and also they wanted to keep it in the family. But what did Conan say? What was Conan's reaction? His reaction was that of no, I don't think so, not right now, leave it alone. And then he walked away. And to me, that just tells me that maybe Conan doesn't believe their boys are ready for the Lucha Brothers. Maybe Conan thinks the Lucha Brothers are gonna clean the ring, swipe the ring, or however the saying goes. But maybe Conan thinks the Lucha Brothers are just too good for the current LAX. And maybe there's a slight possibility, I don't, although I don't think... They might actually go with it, but there is a slight possibility that maybe if this match does happen at homecoming in January and Conan being ringside, maybe Conan turns on his boys, turns on the LAX and joins the Lucha Brothers and becomes a manager for Phoenix and Pentagon. Maybe. Like I said, there's a very little chance of that happening, but there is a possibility. One thing that also excited me a lot from last week's show was that uh, backstage segment. That promo, that vignette for the Rascals. Desmond Xavier, Trey Miguel, Zachary Wentz. They're showing up next week on Impact Wrestling. Not this week, but next week. But one thing, like I said, that made me so happy was to finally see someone as talented as Desmond Xavier back on Impact Television. I mean, yes, he did win the Super X World Cup Tournament under Jeff Jarrett's regime, so maybe the more and Callis aren't really as in tune with Xavier as they should be, but you can't deny Desmond Xavier's got talent. If you could ever highlight a division by one superstar, and this is talking about the X Division, which is about no limits. But if you could, but if you could tag the X Division to one superstar style, you gotta go with the style of a Desmond Xavier. He's very talented, and I was kind of worried he was gonna go the route of Andrew Everett, which was he hasn't showed up on TV, and they eventually let him go. That's what I did not want for Desmond Xavier. And finally, with it being Thanksgiving. You know, it's the second annual Eli Drake's Gravy Train Turkey Trot. 
And with it comes, I hope they do bring back that whole raffle segment from backstage. That was kind of fun, obviously, with Eli Drake and maybe uh, Mackenzie Mitchell hosting it backstage. That would be interesting, to say the least. I, I would like them to bring that back. But from what I've heard, there are going to be two teams in this uh, gravy train turkey trot match where the losing team, one of the members of the losing team, has to wear the turkey suit. That traditional turkey, classic turkey suit that's been worn on Impact Wrestling several times before, going to last year, where, where it was Chris Adonis' unfortunate fate to wear that turkey suit. But in this case, it seems it's going to be a team of Eli Drake, that's right, Eli Drake, facing off against the team of Fa La Ba. And, you know, it's, I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal, the match itself. One thing I do want to make clear is that hopefully Eli Drake does not wear the suit himself. I would think that would be embarrassing for someone of his stature, and especially after that promo from last week. It was a very basic promo. He explained that he is indeed, once again, and I have a feeling we're going to hear this a lot from now on, the fact that... Uh, he is the last of a dying breed, and he is sick of hardcore wrestlers. He is sick of the old school. He is sick of these new wrestlers who think that they can just walk into a wrestling arena and do high spots and flips, and they won the crowd over, which I gotta say, I agree with him. I think wrestling should return back to being more of a character based, more on the mic, more larger than life characters. I think that's what attracts a bigger audience than, than the actual wrestling itself, but that's just me. And with Eli Drake, and one thing that I did notice from Eli Drake's segment last week was the fact that he is far, far, far away from being a credible challenger or even a credible contender to the Impact World Championship. Yes, he is a former world champion, but he needs a few more wins, he needs a few more promos and he, and he needs a few more programs to try and get on the same level because right now and as much as I'm a fan of Eli Drake and I am I, I he is my favorite wrestler of today's era Eli Drake yeah yeah that's right as much as I'm a fan of him I don't think he's a credible challenger to a Johnny Impact let alone a Brian Cage who are obviously planning to face off in a world title match at homecoming, so they've got to, a lot to do to build Eli Drake back to main event title contention. So anyway, that's the Impact Wrestling Preview for tonight's special edition, special, special Thanksgiving edition of Impact Wrestling. If you watch it, make sure you watch it with family, you know, it, and if you don't, you know, it's understandable, you have to be with family, you got to be with family on this special holiday so for me that's it have have a happy thanksgiving holiday with all your friends and family and like i said at the beginning of this video take it easy on a turkey and and the mashed potatoes and the gravy you know take it easy and you know because christmas is coming it's the end of the year take it a little bit easy so if you follow wrestling news topics discussions previews all that kind of good stuff consider subscribing if you like this video, hit the like button. If you dislike this video, hit the dislike button. And leave your thoughts and comments and predictions on the comment section below on all, on any and all of the topics involving tonight's episode of Impact Wrestling. That's it for me. Till next time.